Hi there, everybody. Um, sun is blinding me. Okay, so what I want to share with you today, um, you know, I've talked a lot about um, how important training is to your dog and going even beyond obedience training, doing um, extracurricular activities <laughs> like we did in school, right? Yeah. So doing something more than just obedience, doing trick training, um, uh, agility. I think agility is a wonderful um, sport to take part in, you and your dog, because you work together as a team. I just think it's, it's wonderful and it's fun. The dogs love it. And in practicing agility and training for agility, you and your dog learn to work together as a team. They have to take cues from you. You also learn their body language and what works with them. And, and I'm sure I've said this somewhere in a training video that not every technique works for every dog. You know, um, dogs like children can learn differently and they may like different things. And no matter how much you train them, they may just not like it. And I think that when you do agility together, I think that the two of you become more in tune with each other. And this is just my opinion, because it's different than me just telling you what to do. You sit, you stay or whatever. Um, and tricks are a lot of fun. I am, I am a lover of trick training because now you're telling your dog to do things, but he's having a great time doing it. You know, it's not just, oh, sit and be quiet. I get to spin and jump and bark and play and do all these crazy things and, and they love it. And it really helps develop your relationship. Agility works on a different plane though, I think. It, it, it's more of a teamwork thing and you're learning what works with your dog and the dog is learning your language, you're learning their language and it's more of a, a team thing. And I, I just think it's wonderful um, and it's a lot of fun. So when people tell me that their dogs have a confidence issue, um, I tell them, take agility. I, I think that the working together as a team and the dog having to think about what to do and then having success at it, we hope they have success at it. And because they're running and jumping, which is what dogs generally like to do, I. I think it's the endorphins in the brain and the just working with you on a different level that really helps to promote some confidence. I have seen some dogs that when they started out in agility in class, they were the shyest, fear, most fearful dogs. And, you know, in no time, these dogs, you know, some it was quick, others it took months. but. Over time, you see these dogs develop this confidence um, out there in the ring, and, and I just, it's beautiful. It's beautiful to see. And that confidence will transfer to other areas of life. Okay, so if you've got a dog that you feel is fearful or lacks confidence, take, a, take agility. Okay, but make it fun. You know, if you're going to go in with the attitude to compete, that's all in good. But you know what? Go to have fun. Learn to work as a teammate with your dog okay so okay so um so chewy is my daughter told me how old he is and i forget i'm gonna say three he's about three years old um my daughter samantha has done all the training with him so far and he's she's pretty she did pretty good with him He's a pretty good little dog. We've done some walks and hikes and stuff together, and he's he's very responsive to her. Um, he's very attached to her. He's like a Velcro dog with her, which is nice. Sometimes Velcro dogs are nice, especially when you're out hiking. <laughs> so she wanted to try him out in the agility ring. And, you know, because she heard me talking about how agility is good for a dog's confidence, and she thought that maybe it would be something fun for him to do and get a little different kind of exercise. Although he gets pretty good exercise with them. They take him on hikes and he's, 
you know, up logs and up rocks and down hills and, you know, he, he doesn't act like a, you know, little lap dog. He goes out there and he's a good hiking dog. But she felt that the agility would be a lot of fun. And she did say that in certain situations he does seem a little fearful and a little scared and lacks confidence in different situations. Out on a trail he's fine. But in other situations, you could see that he's nervous. So I told her, I said, listen, bring him to the agility barn. I'll rent the barn. You bring him and we'll play with him a little bit. We won't worry about trying to train him to do agility. You know, let's just put him on, let him go on some of the equipment. You know, we'll make sure we're safe, but let's let him do it and see how he does. Now, I want to say right off the bat that the dog walk and the A-frame were set at um, the standard height. I forget what they call it. Um, competition height? Maybe? And um, I know there are some agility dog trainers out there that are going to say, you put this brand new dog on that at full height. Well, you have to understand that Chewy is not your typical couch potato dog. He does hiking and he's jumping up rocks and he's jumping up logs. And we kept him in a harness and on a leash so that if anything, and kept Samantha close to him. So we did use some safety precautions to make sure he didn't do something crazy like jump off the side. And, um, but this is a dog that, that runs and jumps like crazy in the woods. So there's a difference there. You're taking a brand new dog that's never done that, those kind of activities then yeah, you would want to lower that A-frame down for safety. But me and Samantha were there and we were, um, you know, we were being spotters for him. So, so I don't want to hear anything about you did what? Okay. So I didn't video the first time we took him on the dog walk and I really wish we had then you would see the change but I was more interested in staying close to the dog and I wasn't thinking about setting up the video I, you know I wanted to stay close to the dog and close to Samantha and, and coach them along and see how Chewy reacted on the dog walk well he went up the dog walk fine but then when he got to the top and he's looking down he's like uh, I don't want to be up here he didn't try to jump down or anything, but you could see him very hesitant. And Samantha and I, one on each side, walked him down the length of the dog walk. And he was, he was nervous, but he was walking. But when he got to the point of the dog walk that it starts to go back down again, he froze. He just froze. He, he didn't want to move. And we tried um, encouraging with a piece of food he didn't care we tried squeaking his toy that Samantha brought he didn't care she she got in front of him a little bit and tried to encourage him to come down and he was like I, I want no part of this and she had to kind of pick him up and move him down a little bit and she moved him down a little bit and I stood next to him and she got down to the end and called him and then he went down to her but you could tell he was like just get me off this thing so that's when I said, okay, we, we need to try a different obstacle. So let's try the A-frame. So the reason why I thought that the A-frame would be better because the dog walk is this wide. The A-frame is this wide. So he can walk up the A-frame and he's not gonna be looking down and getting that, oh my goodness, I'm high up and afraid thing. So that's what we did. We put him on the A-frame and Samantha stood on one side, I stood on the other and encouraged him and made sure that he was safe. And you can see that he was a little nervous going up and down it, but nowhere near as nervous as the dog walk. We also realized that he thrives on praise. And Samantha told me this. She goes, he really is gonna care more about praise than food or toys. They, when you watch this clip, 
look at look at look at how he just thrives on her being like good boy good boy and rewarding him with praise he's just like oh my god she's loving on me he just loves it so in toys and food he's like yeah you know so he does something and she praises him he's like i can't wait to do it again so watch this clip So you could see where he was a little nervous there, but not as bad as he was on the dog walk, which, like I said, I didn't record that first time and I wish I had because you'd see the difference. You just gotta take my word on this one. But this time when, um, so the next time we did, we took him up on the A-frame in this next clip, you'll see, this time I'm, I, we're not one on each side. I stood back. So he had Samantha right next to him, but not me on the other side. So this way he's getting used to somebody not being there. First it was both of us, one on each side, then it was just Samantha. And you can see in this next clip how he's way more confident. You could see he's having a good time. Um, you could just see it in, you know, he's like, yeah, this is great. Boom, 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 boom. I'm, boom, boom, boom. And, Yay, mommy's going to live on me. And just notice how much he just loves getting that praise from her. But you can see in just the second time on the A-frame how he's more sure of himself and more confident. Okay. Yeah? Come on, Jim. Come on. 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 So in this next clip that you're going to watch now, he's, he's having a good time. Now he's getting psyched up. He wants to run and he's having fun and he's having so much fun that when he runs down the A-frame, he actually launches over the yellow contact area. Now, when you're competing in agility, that's a big no-no. You, the dog's feet have to touch that contact area. Um, but you know what? We're not worried about that right now. We'll work on that in, in a later lesson. If Samantha decides to go forward with this, this agility thing, we'll work on that in a later lesson. But today it was all about building some confidence and having a good time and, and playing. Okay, so watch this next clip and you'll see how happy he looks. And he's just so excited and such positive energy going up and down this one. No, come on. Yeah, Back up. that's a no-no. <laughs> Oh, you're getting a little too excited. Yeah, he is. Are. Yeah, don't let him Good jump boy. over that yellow spot. Good it won't boy. count. <laughs> so, in this next clip, this next clip is the aha moment. What I call the aha moment. So, after doing the, the A frame a few times, and his, you can see he's having fun and he's getting a little more confident, we took him back to the dog walk. Well, going up it, he was he was okay. When we get to the top, you could see he's a little nervous because rather than running, he's walking. Um, but you, he's nowhere near as nervous as he was the first time he went on it. Then when he gets to that spot where it starts to go down, which is where he froze the first time, you can see him stop. And you could almost hear him say, oh no, I've got to go down. Wait a minute. I did the A-frame. I got this. You could see him almost be like, wait a minute. Ah, I got this. And down he goes. And I, it, it's just, I, I was so glad that I videoed it and caught that moment, that aha moment where he's hesitant but says, I, I can do this. Because of what he did before. His confidence was increased. This is just, this is, this is why I love agility. It's, that was a beautiful thing. So enjoy this. Come on, you're okay. You're okay. Come on. You're okay. Come on, good boy. Come on. Come on. Come on, good boy. Yay! Yes, 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 yes. 
Then we do the dog walk again, and look at this guy go. He just boom, 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 boom. No hesitation. It wasn't real super fast, but he did it at a nice pace. He didn't hesitate. He just, he was fantastic. So watch this next one. And you know why? Because the A-frame was easier and it helped them. And oh my goodness, look at that! That was great! Well, then we decided to try some jumps and we set up a jump and we didn't have any height on it. We just had the bar there laying on the ground. So all he really had to do is step over it, but he didn't want to. He didn't want to step over it. He didn't want to go between the jump poles. You know, there's two poles and then there's the jump bar. He didn't want to go through them. And even though Samantha was running back and forth with him, he just kept going around them. I finally said, you know what? I got an idea. Why don't you just run through the poles and let him run through the poles with you? So that's what she did. And he was like, okay, if mommy's running with me, I'm fine with that. So, um, here, watch that. So you can see if Samantha was with him, he was like, yeah, I got this. And he just ran through the poles. So we'll work on that. You know, we'll work on him running through the poles with her and gradually move her away from him so that he can go through the jump poles without her and, and do a jump without her. And so that's the next thing that we got to work at, um, to work on. But you can see we're just in one day, in one short session, how his confidence increased um, quite a bit. So I, this is something that I hope we can keep continuing with him. And because um, it's a lot of fun, he really seemed to enjoy it. And, um, and it was fun. I loved working with my daughter, Samantha, on this and with her cute little dog, Chewy. They're a lot of fun. And, um, and if you have a dog that you feel has some confidence issues, Think about taking an agility class, but scope out, scope out your, your coaches really well, your, your trainers. You know, you really want somebody who is going to be patient and understanding and not push the issue, um, especially if you don't plan on competing and you're just there for fun. So if you have any questions, feel free to, to post up and I'll see what I can do to help you. And um, I hope you have a great day. Be blessed. Go play with your dog.